Hello everyone and welcome to the April 2015 Penultimate Woodshop Tour. Um, it is, what is it, April 5th as I record this. It's Sunday morning. It happens to be Easter Sunday this year. Um, and we're doing the shop tour. I'm a couple days into the month because so far it's been, uh, it's been a really busy March and into April. And unfortunately I haven't had all that much time in the shop. So it's going to be a, probably a pretty quick tour. I'm sure I've done something in here since the last time, but I'll be I'll be damned if I can tell you what it is. So anyway, let's start here as we usually do. Right side of the shop, pile of stuff to go out, the masonry tools that are still sitting there because I've yet to clear all this away and just break up that step you can see back there in the corner. Um, there's a new bandsaw. Well, it's not new anymore. Um, still working fantastic. I still need to do a little bit of tune-up to that uh, that arm, the upper guide that comes down, but other than that, it's a beautiful, beautiful saw. I'm very happy with it. Um, there's the table saw. You can see all the offcuts from the current trophy project I'm working on, and this is all stuff that I cut on the bandsaw. Um, just having a, a nice operating bandsaw that I can just turn on, use, and go back to other things makes it so much more efficient than the old bandsaws I had. So um, There's parts on the table saw. Coming around here, no real changes over on this side. This is on my woodpecker story stick, and that actually is laid out uh, for a project I need to make for a friend of mine. It's still a ways off from getting to that project, but all those little hash marks represent things. So I use it so infrequently, I don't think it's going to be a big deal. I'll just leave it there until I get up to the project, and then I can make, make it to fit. I have to make a little board that fits into his desk, and that represents different molding heights on the desk. Um, coming through. I'll, I'll write a blog post about this. I've complained about it on the podcast, but here's the current state of my uh, dust extractor and another cyclone. I think this is what it'll work, though. If possible, I'd like to drop the height of that container, but sustainers are obnoxiously expensive for the standard ones, and to get the one that's specially made for the, uh, the dust deputy, I don't think it's technically a sustainer, but... I can't rationalize paying, you know, what is it, $150, $200 for that stupid box. Um, I'll live with the buckets. As, uh, as we move around here on the bench, well, let me start off on this bag. This bag, well, behind the bag, you can see my air filter, uh, my, air, my filter mask. And inside there are different cartridges for the mask. And I've not yet come up with a proper home for this thing. Typically, it lives on top of that toolbox labeled Milwaukee M12. That's got all my 12 volt Milwaukee stuff in it. But it's a pain in the butt because every time I want to get into that toolbox I have to move all this stuff. So it's sitting on the bench now. I need to find a home for it. Um, and hopefully by the next tour I'll do that because my intention is not to put it away on top of the box but to actually find a home for it before when it gets off the bench. Over here is my oscillating spindle belt sander uh, from Rigid. This is the old one before they made it bright orange. Um, great tool. I know a lot of people out there have this thing. It's a, it's a great value and does really, really well. Uh, what you see on top of it right now are the wooden components of the trophy I'm working on. And this is probably all I've done since the last shop tour is I've cut them out and their, their rough shaped is done. So um, I still need to round over these edges. I'm not sure how round I'm going to make them. I'll probably just do something subtle. I don't think I'm going to completely flare them, but um, other than the round over the edge, the shaping is done on these pieces. So the next step before I do any round over is actually I need to do, uh, I'll call it the joinery for lack of a better term, where the bottles are going to fit in. I need to drill or route out a little recess to here to receive the bottom of the three bottles. And then under this one, I need to drill recesses to catch the top of the three bottles. And then further in, again, catch the bottom. And then under here, catch the top, and then on here to catch the mug. Um, here's the mug. So the mug will sit right there. Nice and snug on that. And that will end up being the trophy. So, that's the trophy as it stands. Here's a bunch of blades for my angle grinder. Um, I don't know. 
I have not come to terms. Well, that that's a cut saw with the random bit. That's the aggressive cut saw. I have come to terms with that one. But this one, who makes this? Uh, I forget the brand that makes this. Um, there's a lot of them on the market now that make them like this, and even Cutsall has started making them like this. I think this has become the new standard model, and uh, I don't like it. I I much prefer this tooth ran random carbide tooth pattern, and I think I prefer the flat disc rather than the donut disc. But I can get this in both shapes, um, so maybe it's the donut shape that I don't like here rather than the the spikiness, but. It's pretty good at removal, but it leaves a surface that's so coarse, and this is also pretty good at removal, but leaves a surface that's much more finished, so I, for the slightly added benefit of removal here, I think the reduced cleanup here wins, but I'll play with them both some more. Um, in the upcoming chair project, I should have time to play with both of them. And then over here, this is the one that sees the most. This is my standard cuts all in the medium um, grit. Same thing. And here's my turbo plane, which it's another one that I've not quite come to terms with. I think that ultimately this is going to be a time saver. It leaves a very smooth finish, um, but I've not got enough time behind it to really come to terms. I learned how to do it on this wheel, and this is really what I'm most comfortable with. And at some point, I don't even necessarily feel like it needs to be improved, but um, the turbo plane is, is wonderfully fast. So... I'll certainly give the turbo plate a bit more time before I decide whether or not I'm going to use it. But as I said, all these should get to see some, some nice action. And here's the, the contour sanding adapter from Arbortech. I picked this up at the woodworking shows last month, or in February. Haven't had a chance to use this yet. But anyway, those are all the bits and accessories that go with the grinder. I had the grinders out for work and didn't need any of that. Um, not too much going on over here. The joiner and miter saw are all the same. Here is a frame I made in February. And uh, for family reasons, it's not getting the artwork it was going to get. So I need to come up, now that I've got the frame completely made to fit a, a specific piece of artwork, I need to come up with what I'm going to put in it. But um, I've got that frame kind of in my pocket ready to go. Here's the dust collection underneath the miter saw. Main dust collection, I'm quite pleased with both of them. I'd love to figure out a way to reduce the footprint of the dust collection under the miter saw, but it does tuck underneath the miter saw. It's completely out of the way. It's completely automated with that little vacuum switch over there. You can see behind the joiner, it kicks itself on and off with the miter saw. So I'm probably just going to leave well enough alone. Um, I could go with a smaller shop vac but I, I wanted the bigger motor. It's probably complete overkill since it's only ever sucking from one thing, but uh, that said, it does a very good job, so I'm quite pleased with the dust collection. See, it's not perfect. None of them are perfect, um, but this is many, many uses, and there's no surface that you can't see. That's pretty well-coated, but that's completely behind the saw. Most of it does go up into here, and what you see there is the, the original shroud from Bosch ended that up where my fingernail is. So when I first got the saw, I extended it with blue tape, and I put a bunch of different boards on here, I ran the blade back and forth, and I kept cutting it back until it worked. So it's now roughly a quarter to a half inch bigger than it was from the factory. Um, it seems to do a fine job. And uh, that's about it. We got the planer over here. I need to do a little bit of tune-up on this because the this front bed is not quite whole planer with the center section. The back is at least smooth along this edge. Um, I'm not even sure if it's coplanar or not. I was thinking of maybe making a sled or a false bottom, I guess, that would hook here and slide through the whole thing and make it out of melamine and be able to wax and everything. But I've noticed, I know it's got the... You can't quite see it now because it's closed, but it's got rollers underneath there on the bottom and they stick up slightly proud of this surface. and. I know that's how it's supposed to be. I've been meaning to call into one of the one of the other woodworking podcasts that actually knows what they're talking about, unlike ourselves, and see what the purpose of the rollers is. I mean, fundamentally, yes, it's to reduce friction. I get that part, and I guess they have to be higher than the table to reduce friction so that it catches on them, but it seems to me that 
if they are higher than table, how can you not get st Skype? And uh, s Skype, no, Snipe. You're not going to make uh, VoIP calls. You're going to get Snipe. So I'm getting a little Snipe out of it. That said, it's got the electrical head. It gives me a beautiful finish, and as long as I account for the Snipe at the end, um, it does an amazing job of finishing things. Like it took the purple heart from that frame, and I managed to get tons and tons of tear out trying to mess with a hand plane on it. And when I was all done with the surface, it looked terrible. And I just took the assembled frame and ran it through this thing, and boom, done. Beautiful. A little bit of touch-up sanding, and it was finished. So I'm not complaining about the machine. I just need to get my head around how to set it up a little bit more. And, uh, and that's it for the shop. So I kind of went on about certain things, but still not all that much going on right now. Hopefully I'll be back in the shop soon, because the list of projects I need to get done is growing. And... I'm not making headway on them, so I need some shop time. Hopefully you're getting shop time. I'll talk to you soon.